Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Ooh. It's Impart Ministries International Hello. Sunday Service, 1.30 Eastern Standard Time. And we're always excited to bring you the message from pretty much wherever we are. So we always start by where are we? We are in Tampa. Tampa, Florida is our location today. We had really an amazing weekend. <sighs> Oh my goodness. Just know Still that. Still trying to recover. Yeah. Process. Process. Yeah. yeah, there have been amazing downloads. So praise God for you that are coming on. We miss you. Um, just know that your pastors are refreshed. Your pastors have been empowered, ignited, activated. Because you need pastors that know when it's time to Bush. rest and then plug into their leader. You yes. need a pastor that submitted to someone else. Mm -hmm. You need a pastor that knows I've got to go get filled so then I can pour. That's it. When you trying to pour, you don't have anything in you. Woo! My God. You, find you cannot your, pour from an empty vessel. That's in anything. That's in anything. Natural and the spirit. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Just so that. we have been with our coach, our ministry coach, Sophia Ruffin, um, all weekend. We served her and um, we are most definitely servant leaders. We count it an honor that she even allows us to serve her. So we've been able to serve her this weekend. It has been absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. I put in our page that she started Friday by talking about the the, the story of Abram, the story of Abram, Jesus. Like for real. So it was, it was like, like my real. God, like the story of Abram. Abram? Okay. How <laughs> often do you hear that? <laughs> and we have been talking about that. So it has been awesome. It's been amazing. So good afternoon, Impart Ministries, international partners and members. Of course you saw the title. And we have been in the Names of God series. I so loved last Wednesday when we gave that one word about what has the Names of God series done? What has the Names of God series done to shift you, to move you? What, what has it done for you? Yeah. And so many of you had some awesome words and we're, we're thrilled about that. And so I'm always excited about what study Bible is going to be like, because this is one of the names that, of course, almost everyone knows. Yeah. And it, it's, it's one type of revelation when it's a name no one knows or very few of us. It's a different revelation when it's a name we know. We have a relationship with. We, we, well, we think we do. Yeah. We think we do. Because the names of God has shown us characteristics of God, getting us closer and closer to God, getting us to where we understand all of his behaviors, his characteristics, his abilities, his power, mm -hmm. all of that. And this has, has been no different this week. But I think the the um, example you talked about this morning of the meeting and the knowing. Is mm -hmm. it the meeting and the knowing? Yes. Yeah. And we'll get to that in the message. So, amen. Thank God for you. Put this on your page. Let's get started in the lesson. My God, we have a lot of scriptures today. So, usually we have maybe one, sometimes two scriptures. And we, we really teach from... The scriptures. We really teach from the scriptures. And with teaching from the scripture, we, we have a story that a lot of times we'll connect to. This time, God did things a little different. God did things a little differently. A little? Um, or a lot? <laughs> a lot differently. <laughs> we did things that he shifted differently <laughs> because it is a name that many of us know. We know our, our, our name today is Jehovah Rapha. Mm -hmm. The God that heals, the yeah. Lord that heals, Come Jehovah, on. meaning Lord, and heals, Rapha. And we know that, we've heard that, we'll speak that, but today we're going to get to understand and get to really know more at intimate. a different level more intimately. More intimately. So we're going to have 
multiple scriptures today. So we're going to look at different verses, but multiple different scriptures because mm-hmm. what God wanted was Jehovah Rapha is so vast. Right. 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 So since it's common to us and it's so vast, he wanted us to have reminder points this week. Mm-hmm. And and reminder points is going to be such an important um uh, topic for us processing Jehovah Rapha differently. That's so good. Come yes. On. Amen. So the, one of the first places you'll see that this is mentioned, we've, we've often gone to where something is mentioned in the Bible first, where the, the law of first mention is so important. important. Uh, where did it happen? When did he speak? This is who I am. Mm-hmm. When did it, when did he speak? I am the Lord of righteousness. I am the God of the battle. I am. When did he say that? Because there's so much power in knowing when he said it first. When he introduced himself. See, there's there's something major about when you meet someone. Come on. When you meet someone, they introduce themselves. Right. They, st- they tell you, I am, or, or my name is. Yeah. And then at that point, you don't really know them. Right. You're just meeting them. Right. Introduction. Oh, okay. It's an introduction. Mm-hmm. It's an introduction. So turn with us to Exodus 15 and 26. Exodus 15 and verse 26. And it reads, saying, if you, are, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, your God, and will do what, what is right in his sight, And will listen to and obey his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. For I am. God introduced himself at that moment. He told them, if you do this, this, and this. Come on. You got to do these things. Come on, say that. Once you do these things, I can then introduce myself. So he gave the the, the parameters, right? Like you can't just meet anyone. Come on. There, there are certain circumstances where you meet people. And uh, this weekend and every time we're with our coach, we always say it's such an honor. Mm-hmm. Everybody can't get to her right. where they get the type of poor that we get. Everybody right. doesn't have the same access mm. because not only uh, do we have we met her, but we've been introduced to her. We've get, gotten to know her. She now allows us close to her. There are people who introduce themselves to you and you never meet them again. Wow. That's one type of relationship. But then there's some people wow. that you meet and you know something special right. about this relationship and I need to get to know them. You start building a relationship. relationship. So here he's saying, if you diligently hearken to to my voice. That's building. Right. Because you're diligently doing something. Yes, that's Mm, intentional. Intentional. So you got to intentionally get to know me Uh by doing these things. There's some people that God will send into our lives. Well, this is already blessing me. This is a season where if we're going to be, since we're going to be, not if, Mm -hmm. since we're going to be multiplied, since God is opening up great doors, Uh since God is doing something amazing, there are people we have to meet. We have to, because in order for God to do some of the things that we've seen in these visions, he's got to put put us in in front of great men. He's got to make our name great. He's got to open doors to things that we would have been able to open doors to. So right here, it's like, these are the things you need to do to open the door to meet me and get to know me greater, to to get to know me greater. So his commandments, his statues... You got to diligently hearken to my voice. And when you diligently hearken to my voice, you don't have to deal with what other people are dealing with Mm -hmm. because you know me. Mm -hmm. When you know someone, they allow you to do some things that other people that don't know them do. They allow you in their home. They allow you to get up close to them. They right. allow you to know them more intimately. They allow, they, they may pay for you. They may uh, bring you around other people that they know. Because you don't, you just don't invite someone into your home Come on. when you just meet them. Nope. You have to get to know them, know about them, know their mannerisms mm. that you will allow them access 
to something that is close to you. So God being God, he said, let me tell you how I, can, I need to, what needs to happen mm -hmm. For, for this to work out. Right, right, right. You know, when you're in a relationship with someone, a lot of times you have stipulations. You have expectations. <laughs> Let me tell you what be is real. necessary real. for us to keep this relationship going. You yeah. can't do this. You can't do that. And I need you to do this. Yeah. Now, now we can understand that, right? You know, right. these are my expectations. You got to diligently hearken to my voice. Uh -huh. You got to follow my commandments. Uh -huh. You got to follow my statutes. Uh -huh. Then you don't have to worry about going through all of my secretary and the other people to get to me. You just come directly to me. You got access. You got access. You, you got access. So you've gotten to know me. Yes, definitely. So I am the Lord who heals you. So we know that name. Mm -hmm. But when we were studying this week, I've been like, I think I know, but every time this happens, I'm like, I thought I knew. This is the one of them that I'm like, oh, Jehovah Rapha, the guy that heals, because I say it. Mm -hmm. So yesterday I woke up and God said, you know the name Jehovah Rapha, mm -hmm. but even though I've given you access to me, uh -huh. you're not using my act. You're not using the access. Yes, you're not using the access key. Why well, have a key? And don't use it. My Lord. You could be in the hotel, but you can't get in your room because you ain't got your key. key. Yeah. You got to go somewhere <laughs> else. Prove who you are uh -huh. to get another key. He said, you know me. You know it. And so I'm like, God, I, I believe in healing. Like, I believe it. And I've had to pull on Jehovah Rapha differently in the last week or so. Because right. the enemy thinks... You know, he's going to distract me because illnesses and sicknesses are often used as a distraction right. to get you to focus on something other than what God promised or something other than what God said. You're saying something. Hmm. You're teaching that. That, 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 that's, that. That's huge. Understand the distractions. Yes. Under, understand the distractions, but understand who God really is. Woo! Understand. Go back and look at the prerequisites. Woo! Are we diligently diligently seeking him you know when we get really 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 desperate we seek him hard but is it diligently and is it consistently right because we can we, yeah we mm -hmm. can do it because we're wanting god we are wanting something from god Ooh. at that very moment but god is like why don't you look at why aren't we digital diligently doing this every day why aren't you calling on me every day because there's there's things that try to attach itself to your bloodline things that have attached itself to your dna that you have un until you get sick or till you feel symptoms you you don't call on me but it's a diligently a diligent thing and and the commandments keeping the commandments keeping these statues these things are who he expect for us to be on a daily basis. That's it. Not not Woo. when we not we gonna think about it when we need something. It's almost trying to like we're trying to pimp God. My Lord. You can't manipulate God to get something when you need it, but it, God is asking us to diligently seek him. Dil it says hearken to his voice. That means we have to have a, a relationship, we have to have a, a opportune a opportunity, a opportune time. And create an opportune time to be able to speak with the Lord, Absolutely. commune with the Lord. I mean, in the mornings, commune with him. When you wake up, this is the day that the Lord has made. You have to commune with him. And then we get into this place where the the the, the statues, the commandments, we 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 walk in this thing out. This is not a a, a, a fly by night thing. This is a lifestyle. So that the diseases that that are out and about that others may have had to deal with or struggle with or succumb to you don't have to well so yesterday when i woke up god said, so i said god i believe in healing i i trust you for healing mm -hmm. i i believe in it and we're, we're getting ready to minister because so i knew where he was going he said when you're praying for healing you're not calling my name i said lord you know what? I think you're right. I started thinking about it when I when I start to pray for healing. I, I lay hands because God tells us to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. So I lay hands on myself. I anoint myself. He said, yes, I expect you to do all of that. But the first thing you do when you really get to know someone, mm -hmm. not just meet them, not just meet them. Mm -hmm. I introduce myself to you when you got saved and delivered. Mm -hmm. I introduce myself. When I get to know you, you call someone by name to get their attention. attention. 
to get their attention. And so yesterday, and that's why I was sharing, God said, don't, don't just act like you met me. Act like you know, know me. me. I'm going to take a sip. <laughs> you didn't just meet me. We know each other. So I expect oh, you to call me by name. I expect you to say my name and then carry oh. on. So, because when you call someone by name, this is the whole thing about the, the, the name series is to get God's attention. Mm -hmm. When you call someone's name, Keila, obviously, Keila turns around and is now engaged with you. But if you say, hey, anybody could turn. Or if you just start talking, no, no one might around. even Keep turn walking. around at all. So he said, when you start praying, call on my name. Then I realized. And this is going to be homework for study Bible. For those of you so who are engaged in study Bible, here's the homework. Because he gave me the homework. I don't know what's been going on, but we've been having some homework. Pay attention. You know, the administrator is coming out. So God said, I want them, meaning Empire Ministries International, partners and members. If he's coming for me, he's coming for all of us. He said, I want, I want them to know the week that they've been studying my name. I love that they've been tapping into who I am. But have they called on me by name for some of the names that they studied two or three weeks ago? Or did they think it was just for them to study that week? Mm. I intended to introduce myself so that they could have a relationship with me. So they could call on my name when, when they were in need of it. So they could get my attention. Mm. 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 So they could get my attention in that particular area. So I had to repent. We were repenting I mean, last but... night. Like, wait a minute. Oh my God. I, I learned certain things, but I didn't necessarily say Jehovah said canoe. Mm -hmm. I'm in need of righteousness right now. Come I'm on. in need of revelation concerning righteousness. I'm in need of who you are. Jehovah Gabor, I need you to fight for me. No, I'm going all into war because you all know how I, I'm going all into war, but I didn't call on Jehovah Gabor to get his attention because I should be able to feel connected enough. I feel like running and I'm sitting. I should be able to feel like I get connected enough to Jehovah Gabor yeah. in order to call on him because we're intimate. Come on. That's how, that's how I established it. And I felt like God, he wasn't angry. It was a feeling I hadn't felt in a while. It was more like, duh, you know me. Yeah. If you have access to me, talk to me by name. Wow. Talk to me by name. Speak to me by name. There's an expectation that since you know my name, I've introduced myself to you. Mm -hmm. I've given you access to me that you'll call me. Don't, don't be in need of a lawyer and you know one personally, but you don't call them. <laughs> that, they, they'll, they'll, if they find out you're in jail, they'll go, why didn't you call me? Why did you fall into that when you knew what I know? Definitely. When you and I are personal, we're, we're connected. I went to school for this. I know the laws. I might have been able to help you. I know I would have been able to help you. You didn't call on me? How come? And now you're sitting in jail? Why are you sitting in jail when you know me personally? I'm just saying, so there's a whole different level because I'm old, old Jehovah Rapha. You oh, know, man. that's an easy one. The God that heals. No, God was like, no, let me tell you, I'm more complex than that. You got to call on me and make that a part of who you are. Make that a part of your, your, your everyday life. Talk to me like you know me. So that's the assignment. We're going to start talking about this on Study Bible. What else have you not called on Jesus for, called on God for? By name. By name. By name. We're going to keep Remember going. Remember that part. By name. I mean, we could have stopped right there because that, that in and of itself had me had me going. Like, I'm sa I'm sorry, God. So now when I, now I got to shift some things. Now that takes time. Come on. That takes time. So I'm like, oh, since I know Jehovah Rapha, uh -huh. the God that heals, I'm going to say Jehovah Rapha healed me as I lay hands, mm -hmm. as I lay hands, because I know you and I have access to you and we're intimate. And it's activating the act. It's activating what's in you. Yes. If the Christ is, if Christ lives in you, and you living in Christ, when you speak that, you're speaking to what's inside of you. Yes, it's Lord. It's activating your your laying hands that you didn't get that if, when you was in the world. You got that because you're you're saved. You yes. got that because you allow Christ to be in you and you in Christ. That's why it works. 
because you can't just think that that's going to work outside of it. So when you speak those names, you activating the gift that's inside. They activating the anointing inside of you. You're activating the power that's inside of you. It's an activating. It's calling on the name that's inside of you. Jesus answering to all of that. Mm. He's answering to all. All of that. But if you don't just, you don't call, you don't say it. We just, we say the scripture because God says, um, bring me in my remembrance of my word. But when you're trying to get the attention of who he is in a specific, a, a specific area. area of your mm. life, you have to call on that. You don't call a lawyer when you need a doctor. Come. My God, that's so You important. don't call a police when you when you need someone a fireman. A, a fireman. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So so you Ooh. it's it's different things. You think about what you who you're calling mm. when you need it. And it's important that you know who to call Come on. when. And that's why we're studying the names. He's gave us just a whole different perspective. He's like, This is why I'm having you study the names, not just so you can say you know it, mm. not just so you can look some things up, not just so you can sound deep. So you can contact me when you need me. Right. In that area. Because, oh, this is awesome. So now we'll go to <sighs> Psalm 30 and 2. Psalm 30, verse 2. And all of these are in Amplified Classics. Psalm 30, verse 2. And it reads, O Lord my God, mm. I cry to you and you have healed me. I cry to you. Come on. There's, a, there's, there's something David. about crying out. I cry to you and you heal me. First you cry out to him who heals and then he heals. You cry out. You say, speak out. Jehovah Rapha. I'm crying out to you. Jehovah Rapha. Mm. Speak out and then you heal. When you we think about when you go, and we, this is the example we, he, you and I were talking about. We go to events and then you meet someone, you may talk to someone, you may sit beside them. They may tell you their name that one time and you don't necessarily build rapport and relationship. You go to another event or it's been several years or several months. You see that person again and you're like, I mean, I know your do, face. Do you remember that person? Yo, oh my God. <laughs> I know your face. Like I remember you. Yeah. I don't know your name. Right. There's something different. When you go somewhere and you meet someone, maybe for the first time, right. you meet someone, they introduce themselves. It's, it, if you go several months or several years and you go back to them and they actually go, hello, Yvette. It's like, you remember me? It makes you feel special. It makes you feel understood. It opens up like you got different access. You remember me from when we talked that one time? Now I feel differently about you. You and I connect differently when someone does that. So God is like, even if I, I teach you about my characteristic one week, I'm, my expectation is, my expectation is you're going to call on me and we're going to continue our relationship. Right. I'm not just going to meet you that one time or talk to you that weekend or talk to you for that event or talk to you for that, for that particular party. I'm going to talk to you. And then when you see me again, we're going to know one another. And it talk, it says, I cry out. It means you actually have to open up your mouth and speak something. When, you, when you're when sitting in a conference or you're sitting in a place and you sit there and you don't meet any, you don't talk to anybody, you don't meet anybody, you're sitting there and you're going to, you almost feel isolated. Like That's you're true. the only person there, but there's a hundred some people there that you haven't Especially the person that's sitting right beside you. Exactly. L at least introduce yourself and, and, and talk to a person that's sitting beside you. And I know some of you are, are introverts and you don't want to really talk to anybody. You don't really want care less about meeting anybody. Lord. You came there for the content and, and caring less about the other people or, or the people that are around you. But being in an atmosphere where people are, yeah. that means you have to at some point, sometimes someone is going to ask you, Hi, oh, excuse me, but what's your name? Or, and, and introduce themselves to you. But we're talking about, you know God. It right. says, oh, Lord, my God. My. My God. Mm. I, when you when he's your God. Yes. You, you, and you. you're crying out. Check, listen to this. When he when he knows you're, that you're his child and you say, my God, I, I cry. cry to you. Ah, Jesus. I 
cry to you. He hears my child. Think about it as a parent. Oh my God. When you hear, you you know the distinct cry. You, you can have kids all around, but when your kid cries, oh, you know the it's sound different. of it your different. kid. Oh yeah. You know the sound of your kid. You're not just saying, oh, somebody's kid cry. No, no, no. You know your kid's sound because you move. You react to it. So Wait. when God hears mm. your cry, it says, you have healed me. He said, you have, not you're going to, Ooh, maybe, or you thinking about it. He come says, on. you have healed me. So it's in the cry. It's in the cry. The healing, the healing power is knowing him. The healing power is knowing this is my Jehovah Rapha. Mm -hmm. This is my God. Since he's my God and I can cry out to him because I'm as personal, mm -hmm. because I cry out to him. Already the healing is released. Mm -hmm. The healing is in the knowing, in the relationship. Period. Because I can call you. Period. And you will answer. Period. It, because ooh. he already know that you're keeping his statute. You're keeping his commandments. My God, you're, you're diligent. You're, you're, you're diligent. You're hearkening to his, to his voice. My and Lord. so because you know his voice, he knows your voice. My God. Because y'all have been communi communi communing with one another. My Lord Jesus. This thing is so good to me. So yeah, we're going to cry out. We're going to get used to crying out. Sometimes you get to your children try to do stuff on your own. Like, why didn't you just ask me? Why didn't you just tell me you needed something? Why didn't you? I'm your, my child. Just tell me. Don't, you don't have to just do this on your own. Cry out to me and then I'll heal you. Mm. And this is, then it got bigger. Like this whole, this whole week, like you think you kind of know something and then you mess around and you don't know anything. Now, now God, then God shifted and said, and this is not just physical. It's not just physical healing. Cause sometimes we think about it that way as physical healing. I have an ailment. I have a pain. I'm going to the hospital, I'm going on. to the doctor. Someone says they're sick. I have that concept, but we've got to stretch the understanding. We got to understand differently. We got to understand more. So go with us to Jeremiah 30, Jeremiah 30 and verse 17. And it reads, for I will restore health to you and I will heal your wounds, says the Lord, because they have called you an outcast, saying, this is Zion, whom no one seeks, no one seeks after and for whom no one cares. My God, think have about that, that statement. Jesus. Think about that statement. Whom no one seeks after and no one cares. I am restoring your health. God is telling him, uh, telling us, I'm going to restore your health. I'm going to heal your wound. And he's the God of our healing. Mm -hmm. He's the Lord who heals. He not only will heal us physically, but he'll heal us emotionally. And there are times when we don't consistently call on Jehovah Rapha to heal our emotions. People ask me all the time. I get this question all the time. How in the world did you do this? Or how in the world did you get past this pain? Or how in the world? I, uh, I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I called. I screamed out. I cried out. You got to take this away. Because when you know the healer personally, right. you don't have to wait till you to till it's overtaking you. You take it, you got, God, you've got to take this pain and ask him. Emotional healing is on God's mind. And when God, when, when this word says outcast, mm. I was just looking at it and I'm thinking, how is a person that feels like an outcast? It's not a physical, it's not a, 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 a sickness or a cold or something. It's an emotional place yeah. where someone calls you an outcast. When you, 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 nobody wants to be around you. No one seeks after you. No one cares for you. I, I'm, oh my God, I felt that thing as a kid. I felt abandoned. I felt uh, uh, no one cared. My grandmother was there. My mother was there. My father was there around. But I just felt like no one cared. No one was seeking after me. That no, they were there. They were, but they didn't. They didn't care for you in the way that they should. I think people exactly. need to know that you yeah. didn't live with your I didn't, mom. I, didn't, I lived with my grandmother. Right. So I didn't. I, I didn't. I, I didn't feel the care of a mother and father. 
Right. I, I didn't feel like I was being um, seek after because right. I was I, I stayed with her and I just felt like an outcast. And, and, and when you feel outside or separate from others, that's an emotional place. It's, it's rejection. It opens the door for uh, rejection abandonment. and abandonment. Mm -hmm. And when you feel those pains, we don't often think of calling on Jehovah Rapha. No. We, we don't, don't we don't think about I it that way. Didn't. And we and we have these pains in our heart, these pains in our mind, trauma, and God is saying, You need to call on me in those situations. Come on. Again, because you know me, because I'm your Lord, because I have the ability to heal you. You don't have to wait until this long drawn out time frame. People ask me and they think, oh, it's, it, you, you, you're uncaring. People often think that I'm callous mm -hmm. or I'm hard. No, when I feel the pain, I ask God to take it. I don't have time for it. Now, I'm not saying it's easy and I'm not saying it doesn't try to come back. But I'll ask God, God, I can't feel rejected right now. I got things to do for you. I can't feel pain right now. I'm giving this over to you. That's not my portion. It's not my portion mm. to have any type of pain. It's not my portion to have any type of hurt or trauma. It's not my portion. So when I feel it, I give it back. So because I got to call on Jehovah Rapha, because he, he, he has a desire to heal my wounds, mm. all of them, physical and emotional. Well, as you were just talking, God just told me to go back to the beginning because I, he says, you are now living in, I will restore your, I will restore health to you and I will heal your wounds. These wounds that I felt as a kid are, are have been healed. They, 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 they've been healed. Oh and God. now I got verbiage that that tells yes. me they've been healed. So he made me look because I'm, I'm my mind went to the no one cares, no, no one seeks after the no one out. He said, but Gerald, now you're in this for I am restored your health. My Lord, I've given you your health back. He says, and now I, I'm now I've I've healed you, I've healed you. You you no longer are angry about your parents. You're no longer angry about being outcast. You understand that I've set you apart My for God. a time as this. Sorry. I've called you. Woo. I've called you to be different, and I understand different now. I understand why he's kept me. I understand why he healed me. And I'm talking about from 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 our marriage stuff. Where I am now, I'm talking about the heal, the healing. This thing is, he says, for I will restore health to you. He's constantly restoring my health. He says, I will heal your wounds. He's, my wounds. These yes. deep wounds are being healed as we speak. They are being healed. So no matter what you are dealing with physically or emotionally, Call on Jehovah Rapha on. and understand he's already done it. Understand it's already your portion. It doesn't even have to linger on. It doesn't have to be year after year. If it happens, call on him. If it happens again, call on him again. On. This is not necessarily you might have to call on somebody one week. And because you know them, you have the right to call on him again. So if someone hurts you or makes you feel a specific type of way this week and it happens again next week, don't worry about it. You know who to call you have a relationship call jehovah by name so then we shifted to psalm 107 and 20 y'all are taking a whole journey with us and you know most of you that have been with us for a long time this is very different so god was so intentional he was like i've been waiting for you to know that you have this access i've been waiting for you to know i need you to call on me more often i've been waiting for you to know you don't have to deal with this this long Nope. It doesn't have to be this long. People are people in the body of Christ are 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 suffering way too long. Way too long. With things we could have just called on Jehovah for. Right. So Psalm 107 and 20, and it reads, He sends forth his word and heals them and rescues them from the pit and destruction. Your healing is pulling you up like you just shared from the pit. Come on. Your healing is ready. God is ready to heal you to pull you up from destruction. He sent his word to heal you and deliver you is the way it says it in King James Version. Heal and deliver. Mm. So the Jehovah Rapha is not just the physical healing, it's deliverance. Mm. When you need a, a deliverance in an area, he's, he's ready to pull you from the pit 
and any type of destruction. He's sending it. Ooh. He sends forth his he word. He sends forth his word. So that means in order to mm. understand him better, we've got to understand his word. word. And that's the reason why we've got to study the Bible. Part of our healing is in knowing him even better. And when we read our word, we get to understand Jehovah more closely. And we, when we understand Jehovah more clearly, he's pulling us out of the pit. Why are we in a pit when we should be in a palace? Why are we dealing with, with things that, that are traumatic when God says we're already healed? That's because we don't always understand. He sent his word. If we don't understand his word, if we haven't studied his word, if we haven't put it in our heart, we don't understand what we have access to. So that's like someone saying, here's my number. Call me. Here's my number. That, that I met you. Yeah. I think I can help you. Like yeah. we get a chance to meet a lot of really amazing people. God yeah. has favored us to be around a lot of people. And sometimes they'll say, here's my information. Give me a call. And then you don't feel worthy. Yeah. And then you forget. Or then you lose it. Then you're not responsible. And when you actually need something, then you feel bad. I know they told me to call them, but I don't know if I want to. Or I know they told me to call them, and I probably should have been developing a relationship so that now when I really, really need this person to pull me out this pit, to get me from destruction, I don't know them well enough. Wow. So that's why he said, don't just introduce yourself to me. Uh, don't we? You and I have to keep building this relationship. So when we're building this relationship and you're calling on me and you trust me and you know I'm going to heal you physically, you know I'm going to heal you emotionally, then you, when you need deliverance, I can pull you out of the pit. I, you and I know each other. So when we meet people and they say, call me, and then we don't. One of the things we've been doing in the last couple of weeks, I know that's what you're thinking. There's a, there's a actual, there's a couple that's been reaching out to us. And both of us have been like, mm, we don't really do that. And then God has been pushing us like, if you know what I know, if you know what I have, what's next for you, you will know I sent them to talk to you. I sent them for you to get to know. I sent them for you to work he, with them. He, he made it clear. He made it weekend. real clear this weekend. He made it real so, clear. So it helped us realize <laughs> when you need to get to know some people, some of what you need deliverance from, some of what you need to be pulled out of the pit from is in knowing Jehovah Rapha. It's in knowing specific names. It's in the relationship. So we've got to get to know intimately the word so that when we, when certain things happen, we pull on God's word, it heals us. Right. When I know, when I started memorizing scripture, not just to impress somebody, not just to do, to, to do messages, but when I needed it, pull it up, it healed me. Ooh. It heals me because I remind myself, oh, I know that scripture. The, the devil can't fool you when you know scripture. There you go. He can't fool you when you can just throw scripture right back at him. He gives you a lie. You give him the truth right. instantly. When the lie can't linger, when the lie, when that, it's like when a virus is around you, if it's pushed away by, by things that are clean, if it's pushed away, you, it can't touch you. It, 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 there's wow. a barrier in the word because he sent forth his word. So we don't have to need healing. He wow. sent forth the word. It already heals. The word heals. The word is what brings Jehovah Rapha. Because that's what he said. That's what he sent. So, all right, now we're going. We got a couple more scriptures, just two more. First Peter 2 and 24. This has been good to me. I can't wait to has study it been Bible. blessing you? Oh, my God. This Come is so big. Now. This is so big. He sent his word to heal us. So we're going to learn word. That's why we have study Bible. That's why we have to break up text. That's why we have to get our concordance out. That's why we have to look at the Bible dictionary. That's why we have to look things up in Greek and Hebrew. The more we know, the more we're healed. Amen. Because mm, he sent his word to heal you. He sent his word. To heal you. Come on. His word. My his, Lord. His word. You know why? Because he is his word. Oh, Jesus. So he sent, he literally Jesus. sent himself. He sent himself. <laughs> he <laughs> like, sent. He, I, I am the word. So I'm sending myself to you. Woo! I mean, I'm sending myself to you. I'm sending myself to you and now you're healed. Because that's how we get to know each other. Because he heals. Yes, Jesus. I love God, it. God doesn't operate in, he's not sickness. Nope. <laughs> so if I'm sending, if I'm sending myself to you. Use me. Get to know me. All right. All right. First Peter 2 and 24. It says, 
He personally. Oh, wait, wait. Ugh. Go to that part right there. It's personal. Personal. Jesus. Now, this is this re Jesus. referencing Jesus. Uh -huh. Jesus personally did something. So, again, relationship. Yep. People don't just do stuff for you unless they care about you. They don't just do stuff personally. But like, like I met someone who really has a lot going on. She has her own staff and she gave me her number and she, and I said, well, let me um, get the information for your assistant. And she said, no, for you, I'm giving you my personal number. You don't go through my administrator. You come to me. It was personal. It changes the access because she gave me what was personal to her and said, no, you don't go through the same channels as other people. This is personal now. So now this, well, I want you to, that's why I had to stop. We have to get this in our mind that Jesus did something for us personally in 1 Peter 2 and 24. It reads, he personally bore our sin in, in his own body on the tree as on, as on an altar and offered himself on it that we might die, that we might die, cease to exist in, to exist to sin and live to righteousness. My Lord. By his wounds, you have been healed. healed. Those wounds he personally took care of. We know this scripture. Those are the wounds. Now, this is what we, can, we, we end up doing and we can offend God. I sent my son to take wounds for you personally. He loved us enough. My God. To send his only begotten son to pay that price. To personally take on sin and sickness, disease destruction. I had him take it on. Why do you have it? If I personally, me personally sent my son so that you don't have to deal with that. He took it on, on that tree. Naturally. Didn't have to. Didn't have to. Didn't have to. Didn't have to. His wounds mean you're already healed, but he did it personally. And he took physical wounds. Cause he needed you to die mm. to sin. Mm -hmm. He needs us to die to sin. And then live righteously. So it's in the dying to sin, living righteously. Again, more pre prerequisite. I, call, I sent my son so you could die to that sin and live righteously by his wounds. You got to look at how that's written. I sent my son to personally do something. So there's no excuses. I said, now die to the existing sin. Die to the sin that's in your bloodline. Die to the sin that's hindered you before. Die to that sin and move over to righteousness. What did we talk about last week? Jehovah's Sid Canoe. Oh, now we can call him by name. I'm going to die to sin so I can operate in Jehovah's Sid Canoe and in, in the Lord, my righteousness. So now I can operate in the healing mm -hmm. because my wounds... My wounds should no longer be my wounds because Jesus took the wounds. He has wounds, so I don't have to. Mm. He has wounds, so I don't need to. He took the sickness, why well, take it back? He took the trauma. He took the rejection. He took it and bore it, meaning I got it. No, 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 no. You don't have to hold it. I got it. I bored it. I kept it. Mm. I held it. Mm. And now you're healed. It's so good. It's so good. I, I, I mean, it's, it's just beyond good. Mm. He, he bored them. He got, I got them. You don't need them. They're not yours anymore. I got them. And by those wounds, he took the wounds. And now we kind of shift in to, yes, he took it for us. Yes, he died for us. Now we go into all of that leads to communion. All of that leads to knowing that when Jesus knew he was going to die, he operated and gave us communion. He gave us the act of taking communion to remind us of all that he did, to remind us of what he was, what was happening and what was, what we had access to, what we have access to. I'm going to break up this bread. 
I'm going to I'm going to remind you about the blood. There's bread and there's blood. There's my flesh and there's my blood. I want you to remember. So some of us and and recently our last time with coach Sophia Coach Sophia prophesied over Pastor Gerald, and she said, you will be a man of communion. You will take communion often, and you will be a man of communion. And I had never heard anybody prophesy that. Like, of course, we take communion. We know that we have it specifically. We know we're, we're able to operate in it. But she specifically laid hands on him, laid hands on him as our leader and said, you will be a man of communion. You will take communion often. And I was like, I've never, that didn't process to me fully. And I asked God for, when, when we get prophetic words, especially from our leaders, I'm always breaking them up. Like God, show me what it means. I don't want to miss anything. So I kept saying, we're going to take communion more often. And we have been. And then we've been taking communion as leaders. We've been taking communion on behalf of other people. Because because there's just a revelation. Wait a minute. I can take communion on my behalf and I can take communion communion on behalf of someone else. I don't have to wait till the first of the month. I don't have to wait till the first Wednesday, the first Sunday. I can take communion because I just need something that represents the body and something that represents the blood to remind me to remind me he bored all of my sicknesses. My wound, the, his wounds mean I'm healed. I got to know about his body. I got to be reminded about his blood so I can call on Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. Mm. And so you shared when you said, when she said, you're going to be a man of communion, what, what that ignited in you? It made me think about how purified I have to be. Because I never want to contaminate something that God has given, given to me personally. And so what that does for me is every day I evaluate myself to help me to realize I don't want anything in me that's not going to be pleasing to God. My Lord. That would, that would contaminate the anointing that is on my life, the mandate that is that I'm called to, that it 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 help it really helps me to just understand who I am to God. Because you don't take communion without and examining yourself. yourself. So some of it is in knowing about the blood. And you know, some of it is in knowing about the, the, the body, but a lot of it is in examining, examining ourselves. Yourself. Because there was a time when I would never examine myself. There you go. I would never look at myself. I wouldn't even look at myself in the mirror to examine just the, the, the appearance of myself. And so now God not only wants me to evaluate the, the appearance, but my spiritual, yes. but my soul, you know? So this is, this thing goes deep. It goes, it, it goes deeper. And now I understand as I'm talking, why, what she said that this last time and what, what she said to me this time, how it goes together, together. because there's something that is in it in the walk. Right. And walking heavy and walking in your calling and walking in your anointing. You've got to constantly examine yourself so you can see what is in me that shouldn't be there. Yeah. What is in me that Jehovah Rapha needs to heal? Come on. What is in me that Jehovah Rapha has already, that Jehovah Rapha needs mm. to deal with? What is in me that Jesus already bore? So why am I having it? Yeah. And then you take communion. So there's a level of forgiveness because we know when there's unforgiveness in our, in our, in our heart, we can't be forgiven, but we also hold on to sickness. When there's bitterness in our heart, when there's anger, all of those emotional things actually cause some of the physical ailments we see. Mm -hmm. It causes us to have addictions, to desire certain things. All of it is connected. And so when we think about communion, we got to extend our understanding of Jehovah Rapha through communion. When we take communion, we're actually engaging in with Jehovah Rapha, Come on. the God that heals. So we're going to take communion together. I know normally we take communion during study Bible, and we will still take communion this Wednesday because it's the first Wednesday. But we also want to teach that you can take communion at any time. Yeah, the Bible right. says as often as you do it. Some of us need to do it more often. Some of us need to evaluate. Some of us need to be reminded because then we interact with Jehovah Rapha.
Through communion, we're interacting with Jehovah Rapha for ourselves. We're interacting with Jehovah Rapha for on the behalf of other people. And we're, we're taking communion and reminding ourselves because we're, let's look at, we're only going to look at one scripture because we know there are multiple scriptures for communion and we look at them more closely on Wednesday when we take communion. But this particular scripture is what Holy Spirit really said to, to, to remind us of. It's 1 Corinthians 11, 11 and 30. 1 Corinthians, last scripture, 11 and 30. And it reads, That careless and unworthy participation is the reason many of you are weak and sickly, and quite enough of you have fallen into a sleep of death. Think about it. We could be taking communion unworthily mm -hmm. and calling and pulling back sicknesses, pulling back, mm -hmm. being weak. When you think about weakness, when you think about when your body is weak, it becomes susceptible to ailments. It becomes susceptible to illnesses. So some of us have to realize we participate in communion, but don't take the time to evaluate, evaluate ourselves. We don't take the time to truly forgive. We don't take the time to truly let things go. We don't examine ourselves. Careless God wanted to open up. There it is. Don't be careless about communion. Don't just take it to take it. I tell people, so uh, I told a few them. people that we, we never force, once your children get of age where they have understanding of their own behavior and their own things, we stopped telling our children they had to take communion. We told them we would like for them to take communion and let them decide for themselves. We were literally at church and, we, and, and it was time for communion. I did not force my daughter to take communion. She was at church with me. I knew she understood it. I didn't pressure her at all. I didn't want her to take it unworthily. So I didn't even look at her. I got up. We went over to take communion. And someone else tapped her on the shoulder and said, you need to get up and take communion. Someone she doesn't even know. She had enough knowledge to say, you don't ask someone to take communion. They have to decide that they're ready to take communion. And she stayed seated. She wasn't moved by that. Now, someone might have considered that disrespectful to an adult, but I consider that understanding the word. The woman had to sit back and realize, oh my goodness, this, one, this young girl actually knew better than her because she should have never, first of all, you don't tell the child to do anything outside of their parents sitting right there. Yeah. Uh, pray for me. And, and um, she knew, and she said, this woman tried to make me take communion. I know when I'm ready for communion. A few months later, we got up, and she got up and took communion. I would rather she take communion less often and know she's in the right position, right. know she's in the right place, taking it the appropriate way worthy of participation than taking it each month just because we go to church, right. just because we're pastors, just because our parents are taking it, just because some other person tries to force them to do it. We got to start taking communion more often, but being worthy of it and participating it and not taking it so carelessly, carelessly. Oh, we're going to be, we're going to take communion, but we're going to think about it more often. Yes. We're going to think about it more in depthly. And that's why as a man of communion, you're going to lead us in even understanding that. I, I, I prophesy right now in the name of Jesus. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, you're going to lead people in understanding, especially men, in understanding how to lead their family in communion how to bring that to the family, how to lead their family in being worthy and understanding the, 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 the weight of communion, understanding on pulling on Jehovah Rapha and being willing and not careless with communion. That's a huge part of why you're a man of communion because of, uh, of, your, of your stature and because what God has called you to do. So I speak that over you um, in the name of Jesus and I we'll come into you. agreement with him. We'll come into agreement because if it's on our pastor, our leader, it's on us. Mm -hmm. So there's something major about what communion, is ha what communion is doing. There's something major about how Jehovah Rapha is operating in us, not just physically, but also emotionally 
emotionally because there's some emotional hurts that have been attacking the family. There's some emotional hurts that have been attacking the head of the family. And when the head of the family can call on Jehovah Rapha, the head of the family can take communion in a world in a worthy manner. When the head of, of the family is not careless with communion, when they, when they can examine themselves fully, when they operate in what God has called, when they're no longer traumatized by their past, when Jehovah Rapha can heal them. And then because of God's order, the entire family gets healed. The entire family becomes worthy. The entire family takes communion together. There's so much power in a family that can take communion together. Lord, thank you. So I trust and believe that for us. And that's definitely not something we study, but that's truly what Holy Spirit is revealing to me. Uh, so we're going to take communion together. And I know this is going on a little longer than our, than our norm, normal service, but we got to do what God has called us to do. We got to say what God has called us to say. So before we open the door to salvation, I want you to take your elements. I want you to take your elements and understand first to evaluate yourself. Are you worthy of communion? Let something go. Call on Jehovah Rapha. He's ready to heal your wounds. It's the wounds that keep us unworthy because we're holding on to rejection. We're holding on to abandonment. We're holding on to when someone didn't love us. We're holding on to when someone considered us an outcast. It can make us unworthy of communion. But because Jeremiah 30 and 17 reminded us that he's ready to restore our health and heal our wounds. Mm -hmm. Even if someone called you or treated you like an outcast, even if someone abandoned you, even if when I tell you this is good. And if, if you cannot take communion yet, you work on it. You work on it all week. So don't feel like you have to take communion right now. Feel like you want to get to a place where you're worthy. Don't take it carelessly, but be in position to desire to take it continuously yes. as often as often. And we want to be, we want to be prepared to do it often. Often. We want to be prepared to do it often. And some of y'all going to get, get a praise report. <laughs> I mean, a praise break. Some of y'all going to get a praise break. I'm not even going to say why, but there's a whole praise that just happened. And if you, if you're watching your screen, you'll know there's a whole praise that just happened <laughs> and I need you to catch it. Some of y'all gonna catch that. My God, in the name of Jesus. So get your elements when, when you evaluate and examine yourself, examine yourself and say, God is my heart posture. Am I worthy? Come on. Forgive me, God, of anything that I've done. And I didn't let go of. I want my heart to be in position to take my communion yes. because it's my communion that opens me up for Jehovah Rapha to operate Amen. in me. See what Satan, oh my God, what Satan wants to do is keep us unworthy. He's, he's wants us to be open to sickness and disease by taking communion unworthily or not evaluating ourselves. Right. He wants us to feel like we're not worthy. He wants us to hold on to trauma. He wants us to hold on to the past. He wants us to hold on to bad relationships. He wants us to hold on to resentment. And no, no, I'm not holding on to it because I'm going to be worthy of communion because the communion opens me up for more healing. Level to level, glory to glory. So make sure your, your heart and your mind are pure. Because last week we, we studied Jehovah's sick canoe. We're operating in God's righteousness. Mm. We can't operate through God's righteousness. We're calling on Jehovah's sick canoe. So on behalf of uh, I am I, uh, we're calling on Jehovah's sick canoe so we can operate in righteousness. I, I heard him say that when you take participate at the bread, when you eat the bread, the bread is filling the voids and the holes Come on. that that when you pull these evaluate and you pull these things up and as you partake in the bread, the bread fills you back up. It replaces the holes that you had. But when you drink, when you drink of the blood, the blood purifies you. Jesus. It literally brings out the contamination that things that have that have come out of your body. Now it, it purifies you and it makes you whole all over again. You will you lack nothing. My you God. lack nothing. My God. So right now, if you're taking it with us, take your, your element of the bread. Take mm -hmm. your element of the bread. 
This is represents the body of Jesus Christ. Take, take ye all of it. Mm. Fill the holes, Lord. Fill every void, Lord. Fill it, Lord. Every void. Everything and then that take left your, out this body. Your juice. Jesus took the juice. He prayed over it. And he said that the juice represents the blood, the blood that he shed. Mm. And it cleanses us. And now it's purifying us so that we can continue doing what God has called for us to do. Mm. Drink, drink, drink ye all of it. Well, oh, Jesus, there's a celebration. When you can take communion, there's a celebration. When we can call on Jehovah Rapha. There's a celebration when we're cleansed and we're whole, we're healed. Because we're not going to take communion unworthily. We're going to have all of our bodies healed, all of our emotions healed, all of our trauma healed. He sent his word to heal us and deliver us from our destruction. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Lord. Well, Praise God for the name Jehovah Rapha. We're going to ask Pastor Gerald to pray for us as we have taken communion. Pray for us as we have understood Jehovah Rapha in a new way. We've gotten to know him. We're going to call on him more often. He's going to pray for us and then we're going to open up for salvation. Father God, we thank you that you've heard our cry. Hallelujah. That we've cried out to you and you've heard us, Father God. And Father, we thank you, God, that you're, you're, you're hearkening, we are hearkening to your voice, Father God, that we will be diligent mm. in seeking you, diligent, Father God, in keeping your commandments, diligent in being obedient, Father God, to your will and your way, Father God, to every statue, mm. that we will be, that we are healed, Father, Jesus. from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Father, every emotional healing, every every spiritual healing, every natural healing is on us. My Lord. It's on us, Father God. As we partake, as we partake in, in your in, in Yeshua's body, mm. that every void, Father God, that we've had as a kid is being refilled, Father God, with the with the body of Yeshua, your son, the one that you that you sent to pay the price for our sins, that, that what he bore on that cross for us, mm. Father God, is valid now mm. as it was when he first did it. Jesus. So, Father, we operate in this. We stand in this. We call on Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals, Father, because we understand that it's an intimate relationship. It's a knowing of who he really is to us, Father God. And so we tap into that place. Yes, Lord. We tap into that place, Father God. Not just a, a a natural healing, Father God, but it's a it, it's a spiritual healing. It's an emotional healing, Father God, that you want us to be whole. Yeah. You want us to be brand new. Also, Father, we thank you, Father, for this day. Of, we have been enlightened of your word, Father God. And not only will we just be hearers, but we'll be doers of your word, Father God, because it has it made an impact in our life. Yes, God. It is changing the way we see, we think, we move, we operate, we walk. My Lord. So I just thank you for each and every person that has heard this word, mm. that have received this word, that it impacts your life and it shows you a different you. My God. That you are truly being transformed, not from, from the natural to the spiritual. And I thank you for the manifestations in the natural of your healing. My Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, praise God for you. We're always excited about the Sunday message. And then we take our Sunday message on Wednesday and we ask God what word or what statement or what revelation do you want me to study this week so that I can look up some words. And if you've never uh, had the opportunity to be taught how to look up and study the Bible, you can join us Wednesday for study Bible. You can observe for a few weeks where, for those who have been with us for a while, and we can show you what resources we use. We can show you and, and share with you exactly our revelation from how we studied this particular word. So we will be studying Jehovah Rapha on Wednesday. We begin intercession and worship at seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. You can go to our website, impartministry.org. That's impartministry.org. 
www.studybible.org and click on study Bible and you'll get all the information. Just join us on Wednesday at seven. We have intercession and worship. And then at seven 30, we actually have study Bible. We also offer a study Bible for the youth our study Bible for youth ages four to about 13 or 14. They have a, a um, breakout room on Zoom where they do their own lessons. So join us, bring your family. We are decreeing and declaring more and more families, more and more intercessors, more and more teachers, those who are called to this ministry. And speaking of that, if you know this is the ministry that God has called you to, that God has called you to plant yourself, to become a member, if you know that that is what God has called you to do. We want you to go to the website impartministry.org and click on membership and we'll get some information from you. If not, you can be a partner with us and sow a seed, hear the messages, be a part of our study Bible. You do not have to be a member to be a part of our study Bible. So we're always thankful for people showing up and learning the word of God. Can you put impartministry.org on the screen for us, please, Shalanda? And if you are not saved, we never want to leave our, our broadcast without opening the invitation to be saved, opening the invitation to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. We never know who might get this message. We never know who might have this on their inbox or see this on their page and listen to the message and realize I haven't accepted Jesus as my personal Savior. So in the name of Jesus, that is something that is so easy to do. So if you desire to have Jesus as your personal Lord or Savior, it's easy. You can repeat after me. You can repeat this prayer after me. Lord, I confess with my mouth what I believe in my heart that Jesus died on the cross for a sinner like me. And he was raised on the third day for my justification. He was raised for me. I accept him into my heart. I accept him into my heart and I want to be saved. I want to be led. I want to be delivered. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me into the body of Christ. In Jesus name, in Jesus name. Well, if you prayed that prayer for the very first time, if you prayed that prayer for the very first time, we are so thankful and we're going to celebrate with you. We're going to celebrate. Lord have mercy. We're going to celebrate with you in the name of Jesus. And, and it, get excited because the angels are celebrating. When you say the prayer, welcome to the body of Christ. Amen. You can go to our website, impartministry.org, impartministry.org. And there's a place for those who have just become saved. You can go to the, the website, click home and salvation. There's information about how to begin your Christian walk. And if you'd like to join us for study Bible, you can do that as well. You don't have to join our church. We're just happy you accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Amen. Savior. Amen. Amen. Well, we are, are, are finished with today, but we're never finished with a word. So get your studying on about Jehovah Rapha. Think Remember each homework. day, think each day of how you are going to call on one of the names, not just Jehovah Rapha this week, but one of the <laughs> names we have studied when you are in need of, yeah. call him, call him, call him. He gave you his number. Hey, call, call me. Call, me. <laughs> call, call the me. name. Hey, call me. Call I gave me, you my Marie. number. I gave my, call me. Call on me. So call on one of the names. So that means you got to go back and look and listen like, Lord, I need, I need some righteousness right now. Lord, I need you as Jehovah Gabor. Lord, I need you as Jehovah Sid Canoe. Call out the names that we've been studying. We'll get used to it. We'll get more acclimated and we'll get more We'll get to know the names more intimately. Yes. Know the names more intimately. Well, it's been amazing. We are on Sundays, 1.30 Eastern Standard Time. Next Sunday, we'll be ministering from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We're actually having a boot camp in Philly on Friday and Saturday. It's open on Friday night. If you would like to participate in our boot camp with our Gerald and Yvette Ministries um, activities, go to our Gerald and Yvette 
www.ministrymoms.com ministry uh, page and you can get all the information about our boot camps. But if you're not at the boot camp, you also can come to the Impart Ministries International Service, which is 1.30 Eastern Standard Time on Sunday. It's always in the same location as we are in the boot camp. So we will be in Philly at the at the Double Tree Hotel by the airport. The information is on our website. We'll put that information in our Impart Ministries International page as well. We'd love to see you in Philly. If you're getting this message, if you know someone in the Philadelphia oh, area, yeah. give them this information. New York, New Jersey, in that information in the in that area, send them this Baltimore. message. Yep, send DC. them this message. They may be able to come on over and worship with us. Well, Amen. and if you know someone that's been dealing with illness, if you know someone that's been dealing with sickness, if you know someone that's been dealing with disease, send them this message. That's Inbox good. them. Mm -hmm. Put this on your page. We got to make sure we're, more people are calling on Jehovah Rapha because he is the Lord who heals. Amen. We are Pastors Gerald and Yvette Benton of Impart Ministries International. We will see you on Wednesday for Study Bible and next Sunday, 1.30 Eastern Standard Time for our message. Amen? Amen. Bye-bye.